so my uh, topic for today is line graph and particularly line graph of a tree because as i said that has one important result which is somewhat uh, unexpected or not intuitive and there are many extensions and generalizations of that so that will be the main theme but i want to talk about several related problems related definitions and uh, some of them are already coming in these notes which you may have covered or may not have covered uh, but that may be a revision so some definitions which we will require so from standard graph theoretic definitions uh, so one is the concept of i think you are familiar with concept of a block in a graph So block means a uh, subgraph which has uh, the property that it has no cut vertex. That is one definition. Or another definition is uh, hmm? maximal two connected subgraph. That means any two vertices are on a cycle. But uh, there can be a cut edge that is also a block. A cut edge is also a block. But otherwise, there are. Um, so the picture will look like something like you know there may be a block here, and so this has got three blocks. And what is a block graph? So this the terminology is not very standard, but many people use it now is a graph in which every block is a complete graph. Because there is another notion of block graph, block cut vertex graph, so in uh, that, uh, that uh, usage is different. So this different, I will use this, this is also now becoming a standard term. So, so for example, this is not a block graph because this block is not complete. But if I make it complete, uh, then it is a black block graph. So one example is a complete graph by itself is a block graph. Another good example is a tree because a tree every block is a K two. So tree is one example. So tree and complete graph, they are sort of brought together by this concept. So as a general problem, if you have some result for a tree, you may not be able to extend it to arbitrary graph, but you may be able to extend it to a block graph because they are very similar. Actually a block graph, it's, it has already has a tree structure kind of thing. You can see this, this looks like a path this block to this block to this block. So it has a tree structure. So one more example. So what are the examples of block graphs? One is a complete graph, two is a tree and now I want to define line graph of a graph. So I think you are familiar with the definition line graph of a graph. So given a graph, you construct another graph with the edges as the vertices and two edges adjacent if they are have a common vertex. That is the concept of a line graph. So like if you have a this graph. Then the line graph of this graph, you make a vertex for each edge. And E1 and E2 have a common vertex, so they are adjacent like that. E2 and E3, E3 and E4. And E5 is adjacent to E1 and E3. So that is the line graph of this graph. And line graph is a big subject. A lot of papers are there on line graphs. I am not going to that. Iterated line graphs. Then which graphs are line graphs? 
they are characterized by some excluded minor characterization. There is a long list of graphs. If those are not there, then it is a line graph. All those things are there. Now, we are interested in line graph of a tree. So, a tree has some special structure that if you look at a tree, then if you take any vertex in a tree, the neighborhood is always a star. The um, it's graph induced by any vertex and its neighbors is always a star. So, a tree is composed of several stars. So, if you go to the line graph, it is a block graph because here is a star. So, that will correspond to uh, a triangle because these three edges become these three vertices and they are adjacent. Then these two uh, they become, I mean this is a single vertex, so that, I mean sorry this this one, so this becomes again a star, so here I have one more star, that corresponds to this, then there is a, um, I mean these two edges they just remain, uh, I think as edges, I mean this edge Okay, there may be some mistake, but anyway, you complete the picture. I'm not completing it. But the main comment is the line graph of a tree is a block graph. So that will be one more example of a block graph, line graph of a tree. Now here there is one exercise that I would have given. Is it true that any block graph is line graph of a tree? Answer is no. But I will ask you to take it as an exercise and find an example. If you just think about it, there are block graphs which are not line graphs of a tree. And what is exactly happening you can see. I mean, why? You can construct a simple example and argue that it is a block graph but it is not line graph of a tree that I can add to this list. Okay. So, those are the uh, basic definitions. Now, we have the concept of incidence matrix, but for the incidence matrix, we always took a directed graph. But suppose you take an undirected graph and that concept is given in these notes, it is called a 0, 1 incidence matrix. And 0, 1 incidence matrix we usually denote by M instead of Q and how is the 0, 1 incidence matrix is constructed? Uh, the graph is undirected, let me take the same graph, uh, but just put uh, numbers on the vertices and then you construct edge by, so write down vert vertex by edge. And instead of 1 and minus 1, write 1 and 1. So, first edge is from 1 to 2, uh, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 1, and 2 to 4. So, that is the 0, 1 incidence matrix of that graph. Now, how does it compare with the incidence matrix? So, incidence matrix always is uh, rows are linearly dependent because the sums are 0, but not true here. Uh, for example, if you take like you already see one 4 by 4 sub matrix which is non-singular. So, rows are not, sometimes they are linearly dependent, sometimes linearly independent. Actually, you can see that if you take any odd cycle, If you take any odd cycle and write down its 0, 1 incidence matrix, then it will be non-singular. The determinant will be plus or minus 2. Like if you take a triangle, then the 0, 1 incidence matrix is zeros on the diagonal and 1's outside the diagonal. 
So the determinant is equal to 2. It can be minus 2 also. So already we have an example where the incidence matrix is full row rank. But if there is no odd cycle, then the graph is bipartite. And for a bipartite graph, the rows are always linearly dependent. And that also can be easily seen because according to the bipartitioning, if you partition according to the bipartitioning, the vertices, then the incidence matrix will have a one here and a one here. Every column will have a one here and a one here. So the sum of these rows and sum of these rows is same. So the rows are linearly dependent. So that can be generalized and actually these results, basic results are mentioned in these notes, one of the chapters if you see, that the incidence matrix, so first of all if, if the graph is connected, then the incidence matrix rows are linearly independent if and only if it is not bipartite. Otherwise the rank is equal to n minus, earlier it was n minus the number of components for a cube. Here it is n minus the number of non bipartite components. So the rank can be described fully. Okay, now we are going to deal with a tree mostly, and many of the statements I am going to make they generalize to bipartite graphs. So I will explain those results later. But for a bipartite graph, suppose this is my 0 1 incidence matrix for a bipartite graph, and this is my incidence matrix. That means I orient the edges in some way and construct, so put some orientation and, but keep the same x and y. There is very little difference between these two. What will happen is, let, let's suppose that all the edges are oriented from x to y. It's bipartite, so from x to y. Then all the minus ones will come here, 1 to mi 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1. So if you multiply these rows by minus 1, this will reduce to this. Such a matrix is a diagonal matrix with plus or minus 1s, it's called a signature matrix. So there is a signature matrix. So if you take a signature matrix composed of 1, 1, 1 for the x part and minus 1, minus 1 for the y part and multiply that by Q, you get M. Or this can be here also, it is self inverse. So that, uh, that matrix is a signature matrix. So the incidence matrix of a bipartite graph and a 0, 1 incidence matrix of a bipartite graph, they are closely related. And we will use that fact. So for a tree also, they are closely related. So just like the Laplacian, we can make a Laplacian out of the 0, 1 incidence matrix and that is called a signless Laplacian. So why it is called signless Laplacian, K is equal to M M transpose. K is the notation for signless Laplacian. What are the elements of M, M, and here is our usual Laplacian. So signless Laplacian is uh, on the diagonal, you have the same thing degrees, because M, M transpose if you multiply, you get the degrees. And off diagonal, instead of minus 1, you have a plus 1. If two edges are adjacent, uh, two vertices are adjacent, it is plus 1. So it is same as Laplacian except that the off diagonals are made positive. Zeros are kept at zero, but they are made positive. Can you tell me why the, okay, so the signless Laplacian is also positive semi-definite because it is of the form M, M transpose. So it is also positive semi-definite. Row sums are not zero now. Actually, it's a non-negative matrix. And uh, it's diagonally dominant. That also shows that uh, it's positive semi-definite. And for a bipartite graph, uh, so signless Laplacian again, recently people have been writing papers after paper on signless Laplacian, but many of those papers are without any motivation. Well, that means just because something is true for Laplacian, you should not do for signless Laplacian, unless giving, it is giving some interesting property. 
Okay, but there are papers like that, and uh, if you search on signless Laplace, there are a huge number of papers now. But now for a bipartite graph, again they are closely related because M and Q are related. So we have already seen this relation between M and Q. So uh, for a signless Laplacian, they will be related the same way, but the signature matrix will come on both sides. That means it will be, I want to use my, or uh, let me uh, explain it again, that according to the bipartition, if you uh, partition K, X and Y for a bipartite graph and also the Laplacian, Then for a bipartite graph, you know, this has a very simple property, 0, 0, because it is bipartite. And all the minus ones are coming here only. So if you make it into plus 1, here and here you get signless Laplacian. And that amounts to multiplying by a signature matrix on both sides. That means that same signature matrix, because M, M transpose, if you call this S, so S, Q is equal to M. So M, M transpose is equal to S, Q, Q transpose. S transpose is same as S. And so the signless Laplacian is related to the Laplacian in this way for a bipartite graph. So we will keep that in mind also. Okay, one more thing that I need is that uh, this is a simple fact from linear algebra that if you take two matrices, mm. do you know what are the eigenvalues of this matrix x1, x2, xn times x1, x2, xn? This is a square matrix. What are the eigenvalues? 0 is an eigenvalue and the x1 squared plus x2 squared and the only other eigenvalue is 0, 0 coming n minus 1 times. So the basic fact here I am using is that a, b and b, a have the same eigenvalues. If, if both are m, if both are have the same eigenvalues, If a, b are n cross n, both n cross n, and if they if they are not uh, square but rectangular, like m cross n and n cross m, then also other than zeros they have the same eigenvalue. So that fact I'm using here because uh, this matrix and this matrix, which is a one by one matrix, so these two have same eigenvalues other than the zero eigenvalue. And this is a one by one matrix, so it has only one eigenvalue, summation xi squared. So eigenvalues of this are summation xi squared and zeros. Uh, have you seen the proof of this? If both are square, there are several proofs. And if one of them is non-singular, then the proof is easy because, uh, but the other case has to be done in some way. But then you can appeal for some continuity, that is one proof. There is some proof based on partition matrices, which is also simple. But let me just say that if one of the matrices is non-singular, so if A is non-singular, then A inverse AB A is equal to BA. So AB and BA have become similar, similar matrices. Two matrices are similar if one is P inverse AP and they have same eigenvalues. Similar matrices have same eigenvalues and same characteristic polynomial. So AB and BA have the same eigenvalues. But that doesn't work if the matrix is singular, then you have to do something else. So but here also there is one article by my colleague Bhatia in Resonance. If you search Resonance uh, magazine, 
He has written one nice paper on several four or five different proofs of this. The title is like that. Eigen, why are eigenvalues of AB and BA same? It's a nice paper, a linear algebra. All the proofs are you can easily understand. Nothing, nothing advanced. Okay, so why we are interested in this? Uh, we will come to that in a moment, but with this fact we will use. Okay, now we have this concept of singular graph and non-singular graph. So definition, a graph G is called singular or non-singular if it's adjacency matrix that's a standard terminology is singular or non-singular. That's a standard uh, use of this term singular. So graph is called singular if the adjacency matrix is singular. And similarly the rank of a graph. Rank of a graph means rank of the adjacency matrix. And there is a kind of general difficult question how to find a rank. Then given the graph, can you tell its rank? That is not easy or there is no good way. Similarly, what is the characterization of singular or non-singular graphs? Characterization of singular graph, there is no clear answer. But for some subclasses, there is a clear answer. So, for a tree, there is a clear answer. And a basic theorem is, and I'll explain a proof of this. A tree is non-singular. This part is also coming in the notes somewhere. If and only if it has a perfect matching. You understand perfect match? Matching, perfect matching. Perfect matching means all the vertices are covered. In particular, it should have an even number of vertices. Okay, the, the, there is some expression for the determinant. Again, everything is there in the notes. Uh, for the determinant of a graph, that means determinant of the adjacency matrix. So, let us analyze that. So, let me try to prove. Actually, both parts are proved by the same uh, method. So, suppose A is the adjacency matrix of a tree and let us look at, this is true for any graph, look at the determinant, then summation epsilon sigma a1 sigma 1, a2 sigma 2, a n sigma n, that is the definition of determinant. And if you analyze this, then you get some formula which is called Harari's formula, it is well known. I do not want to get the complete formula just argue on the basis of this expression. So, uh, let us suppose first of all it is, uh, so, so what kind of terms will come here? Let us analyze that. So, first of all for an adjacency matrix, the diagonal elements are 0. So, whenever sigma has a fixed point, then that term will not come. If i is equal to sigma i, that will never come. So, only permutations that come are permutations which have no fixed point. And then you look at their cycle decomposition. So, let us suppose first that the determinant is uh, non-zero, if the determinant is non-zero, then I want to show that it has a perfect matching. It is a tree. So, yeah, so because it is a tree, uh, so I am considering only permutations which have no fixed point and then you have to look at the cycle decomposition of the permutation. Like if there is a cycle 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 1, then that term will come. But tree has no cycles. So only two cycles will come. That means Aij and Aji. If there is an edge, I to J, 
then ij term and ji term will be one so this breaks it into two cycles so so let's go this way suppose the determinant is not zero then there is one permutation for which this term is non zero and that permutation must break into two cycles that corresponds to a perfect matching that is the only way you can get two cycles two cycles which are disjoint and covering so that means i have proved one part already that if the tree is non singular then it has a perfect matching what about the converse so there is one exercise here so by the way there are trees with perfect matching there are trees without perfect matching i mean perfect matching means even number of vertices but you can have even number of vertices and still no perfect matching good example is a star so if you take a star with an even number of vertices it cannot have a perfect matching because once you take a matching that you cannot have any more edge so there are lots of trees with no perfect matching there are lots of trees with perfect matching but exercise is i think you can note down this one or two exercises later on in the tutorial we can discuss if a tree has a perfect matching then it is unique that is the exercise in a tree if there is a perfect matching it is unique a simple exercise okay based on some induction or something so so to prove the converse i'll argue this way so now i have to prove that if the tree has a perfect matching then by this exercise it is unique and so right hand side only one term will come so there is no question of cancellation so the determinant is not zero okay so i want to go further and say that what can we say about the inverse when is the what is the description something like what we did for the moore penrose inverse that give a graph theoretic expression so i want to do that for the inverse and here one more uh, not exercise because i discussed the proof that for another lemma or a theorem the adjacency matrix of a tree is totally unimodular that means we have already seen that the incidence matrix of a directed of a directed graph that is totally unimodular but here i am talking of the adjacency matrix of a tree that means every minor is either zero or plus or minus 1 in particular the determinant is either 0 or plus or minus 1 that's clear from that proof also so this we will do by induction so suppose you have a tree and look at a pendant vertex as usual suppose this is a pendant vertex and then there is a sub tree so pick a pendant vertex and its neighbor and a sub tree then the adjacency matrix of the tree can be written as 0 1 1 but there is nothing here because one is adjacent to 2 only and this part is the adjacency matrix of t1 that's what it looks like in the first row 0 1 and now we are going to use induction so for t1 i am going to assume the result and i am trying to prove it for a that means take any sub mat square sub matrix of a k by k let b be a k by k sub matrix of a and i want to show that the determinant of b is either 0 or plus or minus 1 so we will make some cases one case is b is completely located here then by induction the proof is complete another case is b contains some part of the first column but not the first row something like this something like this or i can show so 
so b uh, if it doesn't contain this one then it is zero if it contains the one then you expand and then again it is one times something here is all then again b contains something from here only but not here same way and finally b contains something like this both the ones then also if you expand along this you will you'll get one times one times again a sub matrix so by induction it can be covered so every square sub matrix is either zero or plus or minus one so as a corollary of that if you have a tree which is non singular then the determinant is uh, plus or minus 1 and all the cofactors are plus or minus 1 or 0 because of this so the inverse will also be a matrix with element 0 1 or minus 1 some minus ones can also come and there is a way to determine whether the inverse is uh, whether the ij element of the inverse is uh, 0 1 or minus 1 i think i'll refer to the example given here because then one doesn't have to so there is one tree here on page 40 that means so i take the same example and the numbers are sorry so this is the tree with a perfect matching what is the perfect matching this is the perfect matching it is unique so it's a tree with a perfect matching so it has an inverse it is adjacency matrix is non singular and i will tell you the graph theoretic description of the uh, inverse so if you take a inverse a is the adjacency matrix and if you take the a inverse first of all can you tell me why the diagonal elements are zero why is that a very simple reason Yeah, but minus one is also there. I mean, that is not. Uh, what does the cofactor formula tell you about the? No, that is for the Laplacian. We are not dealing with Laplacian adjacency matrix. But how do you get the one one diagonal element? How do you get one one element of the inverse? of any matrix given a matrix a determinant of what uh, remove the first row and first column first vertex actually first vertex uh, you get a some you may not even get a tree but whatever you get you will get forest but one of them will have odd number of because initially the number of vertices is even 
So when you remove one, it will be odd. So at least one of the components will be odd. Odd tree. Odd tree is never non-singular. Is this clear? So when you delete a vertex from a tree, what this tree has a inverse, so it has a perfect matching. But if you delete any vertex, you get a forest in which at least one of the components is singular. So it is zero. So the diagonal elements are zero. And now, what is the graph theoretic way? So suppose I want to determine the ij element, ij element in this inverse. So in the tree, you find the ij path. There is a unique ij path. We say that there is a concept of saturated, unsaturated. That means, uh, so just gi to give an example, um, the a path is called saturated if the first edge is in the matching, last edge is in the matching, other edges are alternately in the matching and not matching. So, I think I have drawn slightly. Okay, doesn't matter, but I have another example on page 39, which looks different. So anyway, 39 example also, the same tree, but the numbers are different. Okay, so this kind of a path, so suppose this is I, this is J, there is a unique path. So matching, non-matching, matching, last edge also should be in the matching. This is called a, a not saturated augmenting path, augmenting path. If the path is augmenting, then only the element is non-zero, first of all. And so, and further, how to decide whether it is plus one or minus one? So, that augmenting path, you look at the length of the path. The length of the path will definitely be an odd number because matching, non-matching, matching, non-matching non and finally matching. That odd number, you subtract 1, then you get an even number. If that even number is divisible by 4, not 2 but 4, then it is plus 1, otherwise it is minus 1. And all this can be proved very easily. If you look at this idea that AA inverse should be identity and work with that, <coughs> proof is not difficult. So if you look at this tree, uh, from 1, only augmenting path is to, mm. alternating path is to 2. All other path because it starts with the non-matching edge, it is not. So here only this will, and uh, the length of the path is 1. If you subtract 1, you get 0, which is divisible by 4. So this is plus 1, not a minus 1. All others are 0. That's how you fill up. Let's do one more. So 2 to 1 again is augment, uh, altern, uh, alternating. 2 to 3 is not alternating. But 2 to 4 is alternating. So first of all, 2 to 3 is 0. Because there is no alternating path. 2 to 4 it is alternating. And it has length 3. 3 minus 1, 2. That is not divisible by 4. So it is minus 1. Then 2 to 5 is not alternating 2 to 6, uh, 2 to 7, 2 to 8. So that is the structure of the second row. That way you can fill up all the elements. So continuing in this direction, there are some further results which I am not going to discuss in detail. But just to give you a flavor, uh, can you sort of, because it has plus ones and minus ones only. Uh, also, not just plus ones. So you cannot really think of, but it will be symmetric because A is symmetric, A inverse is symmetric. And also the di diagonal elements are zero. So somehow if you can make the minus one into plus one, it looks like a graph only. And when is that graph again a tree? So such questions have been answered.
and uh, there is one uh, concept of what is called a corona graph. So corona graph means you take a graph and every vertex you add a pendant vertex joined by an edge. New, new vertex. So that is the concept of a corona graph. And similarly corona tree. Corona tree means you take a tree like this tree and every vertex you add one more that becomes a corona tree and corona tree is always a tree with a perfect matching because these new edges I add they form a perfect matching. So if you want examples of trees with perfect matching simply take any tree and make it into a corona tree. Of course you will duplicate the number of vertices. Take any tree and construct a corona tree that will be a tree with perfect matching because new edges that you add they will form a perfect matching. And the result I am talking about which requires a slightly longer proof that this A inverse the graph that it determines you forget about the minus ones but if you make the minus one into plus one ignore the sign then that graph is a tree if and only if the tree is a corona tree. And then people have done extensive good still had one paper very classical paper that why trees are working so people are always thinking that you prove something for trees and then how you can extend it. So this unique perfect matching is playing a very important role here. So the important next class where most of these results generalize very straightforward way is the class of bipartite graphs with unique perfect matching. Any bipartite graph may not have unique perfect matching. The, just take an even cycle. So if you take an even cycle then it has a perfect matching but it is not unique because these two are these two. So that is not a good example. If you want a bipartite graph with a unique perfect matching you can take something like this. This will be a bipartite graph. I have made a corona so that these are definitely in the matching and that is a perfect matching. So the class of bipartite graphs with unique perfect matching most of these results easily generalize. That means the for formula for inverse will remain the same and almost everything will go through without any problem. And then there are some other classes, very detailed uh, further definitions of different classes where uh, some of these results hold. One, one sort of uh, exercise uh, which is based, which is uh, given in the exercise list is that if G is a graph, so let me just say that it is number, it is related to this technique, so I am mentioning it now, that the last problem. Uh, G is a graph with n vertices where n is odd and if you take the adjacency matrix show that the determinant is even that means it is 0 modulo 2. So that is a simple exercise where a very similar kind of proof is required. Okay, So, so far I have not said much about my further detail about line graph of a tree. So how do we sort of uh, so the statement that we are going to prove eventually which will as I said it is a main result. So as I said the rank of a graph means the rank of the adjacency matrix. Similarly the nullity of a graph means the nullity of the adjacency matrix. So the main theorem that eventually I want to prove is that the nullity that means the dimension of the null space of the line graph of a tree is at most 1 that means it is either 0 or 1. Nullity is 0 means the graph is non-singular. 
So the line graph of a tree is either non-singular or it is singular with dimension of null space 1. That is the eventual statement. So this statement was proved by some people independently with a long proof and somehow they arrived at this result because this is not at all something you would expect to write down. Why? I mean what is the motivation? So there is no clear, there is no intuition also. But we will see that, so the original proofs are kind of tedious, very long proofs. But we will see that it is the interplay between all these ideas that the tree is a bipartite graph, so the Laplacian and signless Laplacian are related very easily and we have this matrix tree theorem that means if you take the Laplacian matrix of a tree then the cofactor is 1 because it is the number of spanning trees. All these results are very nicely coming together in this result. So eventually we will, I, I, I will complete the proof after proving some preliminary results. But if you try to prove it just like that, you will not immediately get it because it is not easy to visualize that. So uh, one lemma I will start with. So we have the uh, notation capital K for the uh, signless Laplacian. So let G be a graph. So some of these results are true for any graph with signless Laplacian K. Then the nullity this is my notation for the line graph. The nullity of the line graph of G, not Laplacian, but the line graph equals the multiplicity of two as an eigenvalue. of k. So that is first observation. So we have this notation uh, k is equal to mm transpose, l is equal to qq transpose. Laplacian and signless Laplacian. But what is the uh, matrix M transpose M? What does that look like? So if you look at M transpose M, see M is indexed by vertices against edges. So this is indexed by edges against vertices. So this whole thing is indexed by edges against edges. And when will any typical element will be non-zero? So if you look at, that means what I am doing is I am taking the 0, 1 incidence matrix M and in M transpose M, I am taking the inner product of one column with another column. Isn't it? Because when you multiply by M transpose. So if you take two columns, first of all if, I, if you take one column and its inner product with itself, what do you get? You get 2 because it is 1 and 1. So definitely the diagonals are all equal to 2. And if I take one column and another column, when will the inner product be non-zero? That means I am looking at the line graph. I am talking about the line graph and it is plus 1 only, no signs. So the matrix M transpose M can be written as 2 times identity plus the adjacent C matrix of the line graph. So this is how the signless Laplace M and the M transpose M is coming in the picture. And now this statement is clear because eigenvalues so M transpose M 
minus 2i is the adjacency matrix. So the eigenvalues of eight adjacency matrix of the line graph are nothing but the eigenvalues of m transpose m minus 2 subtract 2. So that means the multiplicity of 0 as an eigenvalue of this is multiplicity of 2 as an eigenvalue of this. So that is the statement, nothing more than that. But keep in mind this connection between M transpose M and adjacency matrix of the line graph. Okay, there is something about polynomials. I think this is also coming as an exercise, but I will discuss it here. That do you know if you have a monic polynomial? So there is a monic polynomial means the largest degree coefficient is one. And if you have a monic polynomial with integer coefficients, suppose you have a monic polynomial with integer coefficients. Something like this. Then, if you have a root which is rational, then it should be actually integer. That somewhere in algebra you might have seen. If there is a rational root, it must be integer. So, and there is another fact which also I will from theory of polynomials which I will use, but the result that I want to state is that another lemma, any rational eigenvalue of a tree, that means of the adjacency matrix is plus or minus 1 not only an integer, it is plus or minus 1. And that depends on the constant term. Actually, if the constant term is plus or minus 1, then that will be true. So this is from theory of polynomials, I am taking it without proof. So first of all, if you look at the characteristic polynomial of any graph, then it is monic and the coefficients are integers. So characteristic polynomial of a tree is a monic polynomial with integer coefficients. And the determinant is plus or minus 1 because the tree is unimodular, totally unimodular. So by the earlier result I get that any rational eigenvalue is integer but that integer must be plus or minus 1. Because of, so I have omitted some facts from theory of polynomials, but elementary facts that will help you in proving this. Okay, now so now I'll come to a bipartite graph. So next lemma, let G be a bipartite graph then the line graph is singular LG is singular if and only if Everything I am saying is immediate from same identity. If and only if two is a Laplacian eigenvalue of G. First of all, what is the meaning of Laplacian eigenvalue? That means eigenvalue of the Laplacian of the graph. So just look at this, this for any graph. For a bipartite graph what will happen is 
the adjacency matrix of the line, the line graph is singular means this is singular. This is singular if and only if 2 is an eigenvalue of m transpose m. But m transpose m and m m transpose have the same eigenvalue other than 0. So that means 2 is an eigenvalue of m m transpose. But for a bipartite graph m and q are similar or rather L and K are similar because signature matrix and its inverse. So 2 is a Laplacian eigenvalue of it. So all the ingredients are used. All the small small facts are used. Is it clear? Initially 2 is a eigenvalue of signless Laplacian but for a bipartite graph signless Laplacian and Laplacian have same eigenvalue because they are similar. So this fact that 2 is a Laplacian eigenvalue of L. Okay, I think the actually uh, this Laplacian and signless Laplacian they are what are called unitarily similar because they are similar via signature matrix. A signature matrix is orthogonal or unitary. So they are unitarily similar. So that's even better than that. Okay, I didn't, uh, so one fact which was given as an exercise in my earlier sheet is the following and I am not repeating the whole exercise but part of the exercise that if you take the Laplacian of any graph and so let L be the Laplacian of a graph and let L sub i be obtained from L by adding 1 to L i i that means the diagonal element you are adding 1. So show that this is a simple exercise that is all I need. Show that determinant of L i actually uh, sorry Laplacian of a tree otherwise I have to modify this. So Laplacian of a tree. then determinant Li is equal to 1. That is a very simple exercise. Actually the whole exercise is describe the inverse also and that is related to some paths and so on. I will not go into that but that exercise is given in the notes and this exercise is very simple because here is the Laplacian and let us look at L1. So L1 means I will be adding 1 here. But now if you look at the determinant, I can decompose the first column into two parts. One is L1, 1, L2, 1, the other one is 1, 0, 0. So I will get determinant of L which is 0 plus 1 times, but that is by matrix 3 theorem it is 1, number of panning trees. So the determinant is 1. Clear? But describing the inverse is also an interesting exercise, but I will not do that. Actually, if you check some examples, you will be able to guess the formula for the inverse. Okay, now the next next result is really the crucial result. That means all other all results so far were kind of elementary this is also elementary but it contains one idea which is crucial so let t be a tree such that the line graph is singular So all I have to prove now for the main theorem is that if you have a tree with line graph which is singular then the rank is n minus 1. So that nullity is 1. Uh, I mean nullity is 0 means it is non-singular. So it either it is non-singular or singular with rank n minus 1. So let t be a tree such that the line graph is singular. 
if the integer mu which is greater than 1 is an eigenvalue is a Laplacian eigenvalue of t then any eigenvector for mu has no zero coordinate. Actually having no zero coordinate is related to, related to multiplicity of the eigenvalue. Because if, if you have an eigenvalue such that any eigenvector has no zero coordinate. I will make that comment at the end that then you cannot have two linearly independent eigenvectors. Because if you have two linearly ident, uh, independent eigenvectors x and y, I can subtract from x a multiple of y to make some coordinate zero. That will also be an eigenvector, but that is a contradiction. So having no eigenvector, having no zero coordinate in any eigenvector means the geometric multiplicity must be 1. That is what we want to get out of it. And why is that true? So here we should look at the graph, the tree. So we will go by contradiction. So suppose some coordinate is 0. So when you have a matrix with an eigenvector having a zero coordinate, that means that vector is an eigenvector of a submatrix. Because if you delete that row and column, the eigen equation will be valid. So having a zero coordinate means it's an eigenvector of the submatrix. So suppose mu i is zero, and let's look at the vertex i and the branches in a tree. And as usual, we have these branches. I am sorry, mu i is not a good uh, eigenvector. Mu is a number. Uh, suppose x is an eigenvector for mu with x i equal to 0. Mu is an eigenvalue. So, suppose it has an eigenvector with a 0 coordinate. Then we want to get a contradiction. So the Laplacian actually it breaks up very nicely when you have a situation like this actually let us assume that this is the last vertex does not matter you, you can call it n or make an understanding that it is the last vertex. So the Laplacian will be broken up like this all these branches will come here like this a direct sum this is the last vertex so if there are k branches then the degree of this vertex is k. So the number k will come here and here everything will be 0 because these are branches. So nothing is, no vertex in T i is adjacent to any vertex in T j, i not equal to j and because of this you will just have a minus 1, minus 1, minus 1 because that is adjacent to That is the structure of the Laplacian. And now because Lx is equal to mu x, and x has a zero coordinate at i, that means if I take, uh, let us call these Laplacians as So, I think this minus 1 I am right in the beginning, that means first vertex, does not matter where. So, you look at the Ti branch, f 
from ti you go to that modified matrix adding a 1 so plus 1 0 0 0 so this is the matrix which comes at the ith place because of this minus 1 there will be a plus 1 that means it is nothing but the what does this matrix look like this matrix looks like the Laplacian of the branch the branch is a graph so it is the Laplacian of the branch but one you have to add because that is not really a Laplacian because the row sums are not zero but you just have to add a one then it is a Laplacian plus this is this clear that is how this matrix looks like all these are almost Laplacians but they are not really Laplacians because of this adjustment you have to make the same idea we used last time also I said that uh, if you take the Laplacian of a tree and take a cut take any edge and if these are the edges t1 and t2 then the Laplacian can be partitioned as according to t1 t2 and this part there is a 1 here other than everything is 0 because anything here and anything here are not adjacent except for this which means that this sub matrix is actually the Laplacian of T1 where this is minus 1 actually because it is a Laplacian so the, my, uh, the Lapla this matrix is Laplacian of T1 with a 1 added so that is what I am saying here. So and because the ith coordinate of mu is 0 actually it becomes so if I call if I partition x accordingly x i is the corresponding uh, sub vector of x then this is equal to mu times because of the 0 coordinate I get the same eigen equation for that part. So mu is an eigenvalue of this matrix. But this matrix has determinant 1. That was one of the exercises because it is a Laplacian and a 1 added. So this matrix has determinant 1. And now just now we proved that uh, any integer eigenvalue of a Laplacian of a tree is plus or minus 1 same proof that polynomial this will also have the same property polynomial will have the characteristic polynomial of this will be monic and a constant term will be 1. So any integer eigenvalue of this must be plus or minus 1 but mu we are assuming is greater than 1 so that is a contradiction. So that cannot be an eigenvalue mu is an integer eigenvalue then it must be plus or minus 1 by the same proof. So we have used the fact that the determinant is 1 and that is all required for this. So I think this is the only kind of non-trivial result required. Now as a corollary I can say that let T be a tree such that LT is singular. If the integer mu is a signless Laplacian eigenvalue of T then also true because signless Laplacian and Laplacian have the same eigenvalue because T is bipartite. So, so corollary I can I am not even writing down but corollary is that any signless Laplacian eigenvalue for a tree if it is an integer it has to be plus or minus 1. Okay, With that preparation I think we can now settle the main result. So let's go to the main result. We have to just put together what we have done, then it will come. Let me just say what I have, what I have done. So look at the look at a line graph of the tree so here is the t 
here is the line graph. We have already seen that the nullity of line graph is equal to multiplicity of 2 as an eigenvalue of the signless Laplacian. And hence, it is equal to multiplicity of 2 as an eigenvalue of the Laplacian. So, ordinality of um, and any eigenvector of uh, because if you take any eigenvector for 2, then by that theorem, corresponding eigenvector has no zero coordinate. And if it has no zero coordinate, it must be simple. That I'll argument I'll repeat that if no, if you, this is a general fact, if you have an eigenvalue such that any eigenvector has no zero coordinate, then it has to be geometrically simple. Because if there are two eigenvectors linearly independent, then I can make a linear combination x minus alpha y, where alpha is chosen suitably so that this has a zero coordinate. That means uh, it's a contradiction. This is also an eigenvector. So, having no zero coordinate means it's a simple eigenvalue. So, the eigenvalue 2, so if this is singular, 0 is an eigenvalue of LT, so 2 is an eigenvalue of the Laplacian. Because multiplicity of 0 as an eigenvalue is equal to multiplicity of 2 as a Laplacian eigenvalue. So, if 0 is an eigenvalue of LT, then 2 is an eigenvalue of the Laplacian and then uh, 2 must be a simple eigenvalue and so geometrically simple means algebraically simple because these are symmetric matrices and so I conclude that 0 is a simple eigenvalue of LT. That is what we want to prove because the multiplicity of 0 as an eigenvalue is 1 which means it is nullity is 1. So, I think this exercise because as I said Oh, its earlier proofs were very complicated, not using linear algebra at all that much, but uh, rather than the statement itself which is kind of mysterious, why all, all these things are working, it is not very clear and all these ideas have to be there in the proof, you cannot omit any one of them. I have introduced so many small, small results and lemma, they are all to come together. Uh, Laplace and sine Laplace and having same eigenvalue. So, you can sort of this is a good area idea for research because many people have done that already. Maybe if you want to do something you have to read all of that, uh, but what kind of extensions one can have. Uh, for example, this 2 actually can be replaced by any even integer. So, there is a statement like this that take a graph with an odd number of spanning trees. Then for such a graph also this will be true. So, if you take a graph with an odd number of spanning trees, all these things will almost go through because it depends on the parity. So, if G is a graph with an odd number of spanning trees, then the nullity of the line graph is at most 1. And in particular for a tree there is only one spanning tree. And so, you get it as a corollary. And there is one person who has written good, very good paper, Gorbani. They are also available on the archive. He has written some very good extensions of these results. Two, three papers on extensions. Actually, I have a, in my second edition, I have added one full chapter, line graph of a tree. But the way it is presented is, here I have simplified some of the proofs, but everything is there. There is one complete chapter called line graph of a tree. And if you look at that chapter, then many of these things are given there. And some of those Gorbani's work also uh, I have discussed. Uh, so, okay, so I think I will just say something about the problems. Uh, we will continue with the problems in the next session. And for example, one more thing you can prove that if you take a tree with similar kind of proof idea, 
that if you take a tree with an odd number of vertices, then the line graph is definitely non-singular. That can be proved. So this nullity question comes only for trees with even number of vertices. So if you take any tree with an odd number of vertices, then the line graph is actually non-singular. No question of nullity. And that can also be proved by same kind of more or less. So you require one or two new things, but other than that, uh, first few, all those earlier results, they are required. Okay, so these are discussed, uh, some of the further extensions hmm, are discussed in this chapter. For example, you can combine these two and you can say that if you have a bipartite graph, with an odd number of vertices and odd number of spanning trees, then the line graph is non-singular. In particular, in particular, if you take a tree with an odd number of vertices, it's a bipartite graph, so the line graph is non-singular. So that result can also be proved by a similar method. Okay, now in my problems, there are some terms which are which are explained in the notes. But when you do the problems, you may require, yeah, yesterday we had this uh, question of eccentricity being, so eccentricity is convex, that I have left as an exercise, but I was uh, showing one example, but uh, there is very simple example that eccentricity is not strictly convex. And all you have to do is just take a path, then you will find that. So that uh, eccentricity is convex that still remains as an exercise. So uh, eccentricity in the case of a tree is convex. That means that if i adjacent to j, j adjacent to k, then that inequality is valid. But if you take this simple example, then the eccentricity here is 3, here 2 and here 1. So it is not strictly convex because 3 plus 1 that is 2 times 2. So strict inequality is not holding, but it is convex. Convex means if you take this kind of a situation, then the eccentricity of i plus eccentricity of k is greater than 2 times eccentricity of j. This we will try in the afternoon, you can suggest uh, some method to prove this. Then uh, I have used one term, you, you know what is a star, but there is something called a double star and the double star just means there is one notation here TRS. That means you take a star with an R number of vertices. double star. This is R number, this is S number, then notation is TRS. And there is another thing which is doesn't have a name, but you can have two stars where in between there is an edge, that means you have one star. and then one star. This is slightly different from this, but there is one exercise based on this, one exercise based on this. Actually the exercise is, take the line graph of this and find the explicit formula for the determinant. And also to take the line graph of this and find the explicit formula for the determinant because there is a certain uh, pattern in the adjacency matrix of the line graph, so that becomes easy. Okay, so I think I have still some time, but I think I will stop. Unless you have some question. Ah, here also that R and S same number, that means actually the 
here the r may be the total number that means i think r is the including this i think uh, that means this star has r and this is s i think the uh, star itself has r number Okay, I think in the yeah. So which means no, I think I have some change in the first notation also. In the first notation also, this is r minus one, and this is s minus one. So the star itself has r number of vertices. I think, sorry, I'm sorry, in the second graph, ah, one more edge I require here. I require one more edge. So this total number is R, this total number is S. Actually, that let me just since I have five minutes, let me ask you. You know about the if you take a skew symmetric matrix, or if you take a skew symmetric matrix, then the rank is even. You know the proof of that. Or let me say that I have a skew symmetric matrix with elements zero plus or minus one only. So. Sometimes we call it a tournament. That means <laughs> skew symmetric. of order n where n is odd or oh, sorry n is even show that a is non singular This is related to that determinant problem. Determinant is even. Similar technique can be used. By the way, because it is skew symmetric, the diagonals will be zero because a is equal to minus a transpose. So the diagonal elements will be zero, and other than that, it is skew symmetric. No complex diagonal will occur in pairs. For you are talking of any skew symmetric matrix, the rank is even. But complex diagonal will occur in pairs. How does it help? Because they will contribute to the rank. That that alone will not give. You. Because you have you have never used skew symmetry. Complex diagonal occur in pairs is true for any real matrix. So where is uh, use of skew symmetry? So skew symmetric matrix has rank E1. That also I asked. That is also a problem. But this is slightly different.
एक्चुअली वॉट कैन यू से अबाउट दिस मैट्रिक्स जीरो एंड वन एन बाय एन वेर एन इज इवन वॉट कैन यू से अबाउट सिंगुलरिटी एंड नॉन सिंगुलरिटी ऑफ दिस मैट्रिक्स नॉन सिंगुलर वाई No, but this is also or rather not just you know I'm just really asking about the parity that means whether the determinant I want to claim that first of all the determinant of this is it even or odd that was the question really so last time we saw a formula for the determinant You know the eigenvalues, and then you know the determinant. So using that, you can easily say that. What are the eigenvalues? N minus one and minus one. So what is the determinant? Ah, huh, that is some sign will be there, and N minus one. So it is even or odd. n is even so it is odd okay so you understand that it is odd now can you immediately answer this question because you just change the minus 1 to plus 1 everywhere that doesn't change the parity in the skew symmetric matrix you brutally put one instead of minus 1 then you get this matrix but the determinant is odd so the determinant is changed only by mod 2 but it cannot become zero so it is non singular is clear so actually i could have asked uh, i could have even removed the skew symmetric all i have to do is i have to ensure that the diagonal is zero and the other elements are plus or minus 1 in whatever way and n is even that is important then it is non singular because you convert that to this matrix that doesn't change the parity like if you are given a big integer matrix square matrix with large integers and quickly we ask you is the determinant even or odd what will you do you don't evaluate the determinant suppose the integers are like 15000 219 17000 it's a big integer matrix and the only question is is the determinant even or odd this is true of any calculation any calculation what you do you just reduce modulo 2 all of them you get a 0 1 matrix then you find that that will be is you Whether that is even or odd. Okay, so that problem is somewhat related to this. That if you have a graph with an uh, odd number of vertices, then the determinant is even. But that can be done in some other way also, but somewhat related to this problem. Okay, so problem.